I'd like to give you a small demonstration on how the OI Analytical 9310 Cyanide Analyzer, online cyanide analyzer, works in the field. The principle of operation is gas diffusion ampermetric detection. Essentially, starting from right to left, we run a series of elements, standards and samples to the machine. The machine uses a gas diffusion module through which we flow hydrochloric acid in the strength of 0.1 molar to up to 2 molar. This allows for an acidified sample to produce hydrogen cyanide gas which flows across a membrane into a capturing solution of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. This eliminates many interferences and is a direct copy of the well-known laboratory gas diffusion system sold by OI to many gold labs and other labs around the world. Once the gas is captured in the sodium hydroxide solution, it is moved to an ampermetric detector cell, which incorporates a reference electrode, a measurement cell, and a counter cell. There's a small pathway through here. This is, uh, allows this instrument to be detected by the ampermetric detector, and we see peaks on the screen as so, as the samples alert. The rest of the instrument has basically a number of ports. We have a ligand addition port at the back, which we're not using on this machine. This is a free cyanide machine currently. We have an acid port, a base port, and a DI water port. In the housing above the instrument, we incorporate a selection valve where we can access various ports. Port 1 is standard 1, port 2 is standard 2, port 3 is sample, and in this case port 4 we've got as a grab sample. There are two free ports which can be selected. At this stage we're running a 2 ppm and a 20 ppm calibrant, but we can run anything from low uh, sub ppm levels right through to thousands of ppm on this instrument, on the same machine. It is a very wide dynamic range. I have a grab sample on the side here to be used as an example in a minute. The instrument is currently in peak four, but we can change the display to numeric, or we can have trend analysis. So you can see at, a, at, a, at an instant if there's trending down or trending up. Other options on the screen are we can monitor data, we can abort the run. This is the grab sample button, which will be very useful in the field. And of course, a shutdown button. Data is stored. These sample numbers can be changed, the current results shown on the top. This data can be exported. We set up a sequence here, which is not changed unless the operator wants to change it. At this point we've got 1, 2 and 3 ports operational. Port 1 is Cal 1, Port 2 is Cal 2, Port 3 is sample. We're doing a single injection, single injection, and we do five samples before we cycle back to a calibration cycle. That is user changeable depending on the conditions in your uh, field laboratory. We have a maintenance screen which allows us to do things like store the data. We can archive results to USB memory stick. There is a USB memory port here and an Ethernet port here. There's a series of alarms can be set as well. Uh, using 4 to 20 milliamp outputs back into monitor. At this point, we're running at 13.6 ppm. If I activate a grab sample, I push this button, it tells us that we're going to use port 4, gives a sample ID which you can change, and we're going to do two injections. It's wise to do more than one injection just to, uh, to cope with any carryover. So we say OK to that. And during the run, it will wait for the last sample to finish. We are detecting cyanide, so it will not pump in the grab sample, which is here, until the last sample is finished. We'll just have to wait a while now. On the screen I can show a few things here. We can change the display from 10 minutes through 20, 30 and, and longer. But we'll leave it in 30 for now. We get the signal strength shown here, which is the baseline. We can offset that baseline. 
we can change the attenuation so in this case we'll change it down to 5000 and we can set an offset of say 800 8 oh, oh. exit and that just adjusts the baseline just for visual purposes only we're now loading sample and reacting so last it's now asking us to add the tube to the sample the grab sample which I've already done so we say okay to that and now we wait You can see the peak evolving and coming back down to baseline now. You can watch the signal number at the same time. It's still detecting the last peak injected before we do the grab sample. Okay, it's finished, it's recalculating the, the cyanide, go back here, it's calculating data, calculating sample, and sample. It's now priming the grab sample from this bottle down here. Loading. Injecting and reacting. So now the sample has been injected into the line with acid going through the diffusion module all interferences will be left behind as the hydrogen cyanide gas moves across the membrane into the capturing solution which is sodium hydroxide it will then go to the detector and be analysed and now we see the unknown takes a little while, I do apologise, but it's um, a lot quicker than setting up an instrument down in the laboratory and waiting for a result. So the old sample was Finishing the peak, it's calculating the result. And the new result is now displayed. The instrument is very easy to use. 
maintenance points are here diffusion membrane from time to time cleaning of the ampliometric cell eventually the reference electrode be, to be replaced and reagents need to be changed these in a online situation would be carboys of 20 litres or more for DI water uh, 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide and uh, 0.1 molar to 2 molar hydrochloric acid your standards depending on the level uh, they would need to be changed regularly if they're very low levels probably daily if they're high levels in hundreds of ppms possibly weekly those are um, things that need to be worked out on each site but as it stands the instrument is very very easy to use very operator friendly with a lot of features of the laboratory instruments which is well, well, well regarded in the field interferences are minimal ease of operation 